It is a fact as old as time. Well, at least as HD0 is old. If you wanted to update an HD0 VTX, you gotta take one of these VRXs or maybe, you know, a set of goggles, something like that. And you gotta plug a cable into it and then you gotta plug the VTX into the thingy -ma bob, and then you've gotta load an SD card with the firmware, boot it all up and hope it works. Today I'm gonna show you an easier way to do it without one of these. Hey everybody, I'm Big Ninja, and we're gonna look at the HD0 programmer. You see this little doodad here with two wires coming off of it? It has a USB-C on the other end, because now you can program your HD0 VTXs with nothing but your computer, this cable, and a USB-C connection, which is a lot simpler than, you know, trying to get your VRXs in line or pull your goggles in to do a firmware update over the SD card. Oh, that's kind of a mess. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do all that. And the first step is to have one of these. Now I fervently believe that every set of HD0 goggles should come with this little cable. It's like 14 bucks. You can get it a whole lot of places and I'll have links in the description below. Not affiliate links, but I'll put one for East Coast, West Coast and Central. And just, you know, where you are, make the shipping easier. This is a cheap item and paying for shipping kind of sucks, but every pair of AC0 goggles should come with one of these because it makes life so much easier. And if you have a new Freestyle V2 VTX, which is what I'll be flashing today, you'll notice it doesn't come with an update cable at all, which is not like other VTXs. The other ones came with update cables. This one do not. Well, that's because it's easier with this thing, more than likely, or they expect for you to have a old one watt VTX and steal the cable off it somehow. Anyway, if you don't have one, this is the best way to get it. Just go ahead and get the VRX programmer or VTX programmer. It's so much better than a cable. Let's go download the software. And for that, we're going to HD Zero's download page where we will scroll on down to utilities. And you have this VTX programmer. We're gonna click this and download the zip file. Now, it doesn't matter where you put the zip if you drop it in your downloads or anything like that. What will matter is where we put the files out of the zip because some of the processes we're gonna do here are gonna be specific to what's called a relative path. So things that we do to make this work are only going to work if the files stay in the same place forever. This is not one of those things where you open up the zip file, just double click and run. No, it has some other stuff done to it. So what I recommend is that you unzip it somewhere that you can keep it forever. For me, I have made a folder in my C drive called Quad Tools, and I have a folder called HGZ Programmer. I have put all of the things out of that zip file into this folder. Because before we do anything, we've actually got to run something to install the driver so that this little board can talk to your pewter. And when we do that, it's gonna be relative to wherever these files live. So you do not want to ever move them. You will always run them from here. There's no installation for this software, so you're not gonna get like a link on your desktop or anything like that. So I will show you how to add one just in case you want one. But first, let's get the driver package installed because it is critical to this functioning. And we'll do that by going into the driver folder. And then in here, there is a setup. We're gonna double click setup. It's gonna ask for administrative permission. And then we can hit install right here. And then it will install our driver for us. Basically, it's just the driver for the chip on this little board, not too big a deal. With that install done, I'm gonna back up a folder and go to this HD0 VTX programmer file executable thing. This is where I'm gonna show you how to make a shortcut. We're gonna right click that and we don't see a sin to or anything here. You could pin it to start, but that's not what we want. We're gonna go down to show more options. We're gonna go to send to. And if I hit desktop, it will have created a desktop shortcut. Now I can use my desktop shortcut to run it. I don't have to go dig this folder up every time. Super duper handy. So now this is all configured and installed. It's actually easily time to flash a VTX with this thing. So the things you will need are a USB-C cable connected to a USB port on your computer, your programmer, and a VTX to flash. Let me grab my VTX. Here mine is, the V2 Freestyle VTX. I also have a V1. The process works basically the same. So I'm gonna be showing you on the V2 because I bet a whole bunch of you are gonna be doing this to your V2 because you just bought one of these. Anyway, on the V2, we are gonna locate the firmware update port. Mine is down here toward the bottom. Reference the manual from HD0, which you can get back over at the downloads page for your VTX to figure out where your firmware port is. Older versions of the Freestyle and some VTXs use the larger connector, and then things like the 1S, some of the race boards I think now, and this V2 Freestyle VTX use the small connector. So reference your documents, find where it is, plug this thing into this thing, and then plug the whole thing into USB. 
And once you do, you'll have a red light on your program. Now it's time to start up the application we just made a shortcut for. If you're still in the folder, just double click HD0 VTX Programmer, the executable. If not, double click that icon that we made on the desktop. Either way will work. And with that open, we get some options. The first thing we're gonna do is hit refresh, just for good measure, it should say success. Then we can hit auto detect. You'll notice mine has choose version. I can pick a version and it says HD0 freestyle because it found that I'm running a freestyle VTX. Now the V2 is fairly new, so firmware is not really super out for it, but let's pretend you have a V1 VTX. At this point, you could choose version 1.4, whatever the newest is, hit HD0 freestyle, which is already pulled down if you did the auto detect, and then hit load firmware online, which I can't because I have the V2 and I don't want to do that. I have special firmware because it came with the demo and all this other stuff. Not your typical case, but it's what I have. Anyway, I want to show you how to flash firmware from local files, because specifically for the Freestyle VTX, it's going to be very important. Not only do you have to flash firmware, you have to flash unlocks if you want to use the full one watt. So we're going to need to do this anyway. Let me show you how that works. Over at the downloads page, we can pull the newest firmware in a zip, which is 2208, 2023. As of this video anyway, it could be newer, but that's not the only thing we need for a Freestyle VTX. We really need the unlocks too, so let's go ahead and get those. And those are located down here under utilities. You can get unlock low band if that's your kind of thing, or you can get unlock freestyle if you just want the one watt. Low band gives you some different frequency output options, which can be super handy. I will make a whole video on how low band works, what it is, and if it's good, because I haven't got to try it too much yet. I've been playing with it a little bit. And the unlock does what it says. It unlocks the full one watt potential of the VTX. So most people are doing that one. Don't forget though, you have to have a hand license to technically do this. Just know that you're accepting the risk for doing this and it says so right on the webpage. Can't really get away from that one. Anyway, now that we have it all downloaded, you're gonna wanna extract those things. And I keep all mine in one spot, but this is the firmware we just downloaded. So we wanna right click extract all, and then that will make a new folder with all of the firmwares of this version for different boards. We're gonna to wanna to find the freestyle in here, right click and extract all as well, which will then get us to where we can have the .bin file that we're after. And you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing with the unlock. Just download it in a place, right click, and then extract it. Super easy. Now that we have our local firmware versions, let me show you how to flash locally. I think this is what a lot of people are gonna wind up doing. It is really easy to have it auto detect and pull from online, but I can't pick the unlock there or the low band unlock and other things are subject to change. So learning how to do this with local firmware is really nice, especially if you wanna do something like test beta firmware. This makes that so much easier too. Anyway, back to the flasher so we can load this up. We're gonna pick load firmware local, then I'm gonna go find all of my firmwares in the place that I put them, which yours will look like this, the version, and then the freestyle folder and you'll pick this tx.bin. For me, I'm gonna pick a different one because like I said, this is the V2 freestyle and I have other firmware. But for you, you'll wanna go to the thing you downloaded, the thing you extracted, the VTX stuff you extracted inside of there and download that bin file. It'll all make sense after you've done it a couple times. It's a lot of extracting and going through zips, but it is what it is. And with that selected, we have firmware local green, VTX program all green, we're good to go. We'll hit update and the bar goes and the thing is on its way. We have update success we have updated the firmware. Now, if you're on a Freestyle VTX, you have another step to do. If you're on other VTXs, you don't. If you're doing a Race VTX or a 1S VTX, any of those don't have an unlock procedure. There may be a low band unlock, don't quote me on that. And it would be the same step I'm about to do here. So if you need to do that, this is what you'll do. But for the Freestyle specifically, if you want to unlock, now is the time to do so. Now, don't forget between that whole flashing step of firmware and unlocking, if you're doing a Freestyle VTX, you have to make sure that you hook a camera up, an antenna up, and to your flight controller, basically install it in your quad, because you can't unlock it unless you've powered it with a LiPo once. So you have to power it with a LiPo once with the programmer disconnected, don't leave this thing connected, disconnected entirely, otherwise it'll light this thing up and get real confused. So unplug it, plug a LiPo into it with an antenna and camera connected, because it will be transmitting RF. And you want to wait till the blue light on the freestyle flashes five times five times, yes, before you move on to the next step, which is loading the unlock firmware. Make sure you've done that, or it won't actually unlock and you'll be back here. Yeah, 
So we're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna load firmware local again, and we are gonna go find the unlock files. So I have extracted unlock freestyle. I'm gonna find the tx.bin there. And same thing, I'm just gonna load that and hit update. Update success. So now we should have an updated unlocked freestyle VTX and you're good to go. And if it's any of the other ones, you may not have had to do the unlock step. Now let me throw in a pro tip. If at this point after unlocking it, you go to power it on again and things aren't right, like maybe MSP VTX control doesn't work or some other things like that, go back to the first step and reflash the firmware to it. I find that it's always best to flash the firmware, then power it up with LiPo, wait for the five blinks, flash the unlock, and then power it up again. You don't have to wait for anything. Power it up, wait about five, ten, five, ten, ten seconds. Ten seconds is fine. We'll wait for ten seconds. Unplug it and then flash the firmware again with the firmware flasher. That seems to be the best course of action here. So back to the video, just wanted to throw in that pro tip. You just wanna make sure that you keep up with the version of the freestyle unlocking tool because things do change. For instance, on the downloads page, we can see this is version 1.0.2. But if we go to the programmer page, there's a software download link here too. But if you click that one, you're gonna get version 1.0.0. And then when you do the pull down to change your version, if you wanna do it online, you're not gonna have 1.4 available. It just doesn't exist there. Strange, but that's what it is. Anyway, make sure you download the newest version. At least go to the downloads page and double check before you do this again. And make sure if you update the files that are in the unlocking tool zip, into the folder that we made on the first step, you rerun that installer for the driver, just in case. It's always better to be safe than sorry, especially when you're talking about unlocking $100 VTXs. That's kinda easier. You do it how you wanna do it, but I like to not have to get the goggles out, put it on an SD card, power it all up, hook everything up, and then get no feedback in the goggles whenever things go wrong. That's really not my jam. This seems easier to me, and I think that it's a really good step forward for HD0. Hopefully they're gonna develop this into an even better app that doesn't require a driver, doesn't give you warnings maybe about being unsafe because that can happen in Windows 11. Yeah, hopefully it gets better, and maybe even sometime we'll get it over the air. That would be super, super awesome to have over the air updates. I think so. Let's go for that. Thanks HD0 team for making this available to us. And yeah, if you have any questions about it, leave me a comment below. If you want any more detail, feel free to head over to the Discord and ask myself and all the greasy pilots over there for help. There's quite a few people that fly HD0, and I lurk in there quite a bit. Even if I'm not there immediately, I'll probably see your question at some point and hit you back with an answer. And yeah, until next time, stay greasy, and I'll catch you later. And here's all the patrons that make it possible for me to download all those zip files, unzip them onto something, and then show you how to do this. It's really not that easy to update firmware for this stuff, is it? No, nope, it's not. But maybe someday it'll get better. And this is a step in the right direction. These people help me pay for the ability to show you this step in the right direction. And they'll help me pay for the next step, whatever the next step is. Because they're awesome. They are my patrons. And if you want to be one, there's a link in the description below. You can have your name on a little scrolly list. I'll say stupid stuff while it happens. That's usually how this goes. <laughs>